All right. Hello, ESA. Uh, I'm Kekri. I will be showing you Soma any percent today. And uh, with me today, I have my co commentators if you want to introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Trigger. I've been running this game pretty much since it came out. And I most recently ran this game at ESA Summer 2019. Hello, I'm Cosmicborn. I'm a past runner of this game's No Major Glitches category. And uh, timing won't start uh, right when I create a new game here. It will start after the cutscene. Um, if you've seen uh, speedruns of uh, Soma before, you know it's pretty broken. Um, I think uh, like uh, the HBL3 engine in itself is pretty broken. If you saw the bunker earlier this, uh, this event, it uses the same engine, it has the same glitches. We'll go more into details later about that. Um, and this is just the starting cutscene. It takes a little bit, but uh, soon the time will start after the, the crashing sound. So this is all part of the story. Um, Simon has a brain injury and uh, this liquid that has been given to him, he was asked to take by his doctor. And uh, he gets into a car crash. And timer starts now. There we go. There we go. All right. Here we go. Waking up with our clothes on. Great start. <laughs> Great start to the morning. We're going to prepare for uh, the day beforehand. Saving time. Yeah, so this is a quick call from Munchie just to tell us that we've got an appointment today, just as a reminder. We haven't drunk our tracer fluid, which we were supposed to do. And Simon, being Simon, doesn't remember where he's put it. Uh, so we have to check everywhere we think of, and it's always going to be in the last place that we look. In this map, there are three places that we can possibly find it, and it will always spawn in the third one that we check. So we're checking the drawer, bathroom, and it'll always spawn in the cabinet. That positioning gives us the most amount of time to run to eat up time taken by this animation. Is the first map done? Yeah. Uh, the beginning is very, very chill. Um, it's there, quite a lot of maps back to back right. um, very quickly. Yeah, Especially it's compared a to five, the five the minute sort of three map chill prologue section, and then we get into the real meat of this run. So, probably the easiest map of the run. Uh, right <laughs> I now. don't know. I don't know. This is pretty difficult. I don't know. We it's always know your run is blessed failed. if you get a gold split on the train station here. There we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually don't need to wait even for the phone to come up. You can just spam right click and it cancels it before the phone is even brought up. You don't have to press decline at all. Yeah, so just as a, a quick sort of preamble, um, we're going to be using a, a certain glitch in this game quite a lot. Uh, it's called the re-grab glitch. So in this game, when you hold props, they can be in one of two states. When you first pick a prop up, it's going to be in inspection mode, which allows you to freely like rotate and inspect that prop in front of you. If you happen to pick up a prop that is already colliding with you, it will instead turn into a collision mode. And I'm going to shut up just a quick sec, because Kikri's going for... Ah, uh, uh, didn't get Munchie skip. Saves about half a second by getting on the other side of Munchie here, so we can get into the chair a bit quicker. Yeah, it, it's usually, it doesn't save any time, especially if you go for the left side. It's, I think it's a little bit slower, because you bump into the lamp. But it just looks funny talking with Munchi from the other side. <laughs> just talking to the back of his head. Yeah. You all know looking funny is more important than going fast as well. So, of course. Yeah, so re-grab glitch. Um, as I was saying, like, if you pick up a prop that is already colliding with you, it will like force itself away from you. Um, and we can use that to both push ourselves around as well. So we'll be using that in two different ways. If we do it sort of pulling a prop inside us to push us sideways, we can use that to get through thinner bits of geometry, like small doors, thinner walls, fences, things like that. Uh, if we are stood on top of a prop that we use to set up a regrab glitch, we can use that as a portable floor and basically just fly across maps. We bring the floor with us across the whole level. Yeah. And especially in the later game, uh, where the areas are very, very big and open, it skips an unbelievable amount of time. Ready? Say cheese. 
Yeah, say cheese. Peace. So at this point, Cake is going to be holding W because in this very early version of the game, this is 1.00, the launch version, uh, they forgot to cap this animation and like keep you in the chair, so we're actually going to stand up before we're normally supposed to be able to. Is the very first example of prop clipping right here. Mr. Munchie, and a second, yeah, all back to back, very quick, yep. passing through. Because these props can be put, like picked up from any any direction and rotated freely, um, we do have a couple of like setups for where we stand and where we yeah, look at the prop to make it a little bit quicker. In. All right, you guys want some out of bounds, right? So here we go. This is where it starts. So we're going to uh, examine this hole <laughs> first of all. Wildflower heals us. <laughs> We'll actually be using it to heal for the, I believe, the only time in the run here. Yeah, coming up yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah, so this, this vent is another one that in the very early patches of the game, they forgot to put something in to stop you from leaving. So we just climb into the vent and then immediately leave it again. And this is prop flying. Yep. So we are essentially bringing the floor with us. So what we're walking on is the prop that we're holding. And as you can see, we've just skipped the entire station segment there. Uh, coming up here, uh, there is a cutscene, but I'm going to use the wildflower at the same time as the cutscene starts. That way, I will break out of the controlled there? state I so I can move around see. freely and we'll uh, set up another prop fly and uh, we're on our way. Drop down here now. Me. Nasty oh, damage. You, you can't actually die from fall damage in this game uh, unless you fall off uh, you off me? the map, basically. Yeah, so at that point, Cake was waiting for Simon to have a line in the dialogue with Catherine, who we haven't actually introduced yet, but that is uh, <laughs> something we'll get to. We'll meet her properly later. Uh, by interacting with that robot right when Simon speaks, we skip a large part of the dialogue between the two of them. So an important thing about healing here, there is... So Soma doesn't actually have like a health meter. There's no absolute way to tell how much health you have, but the, s the more injured you are, the slower you walk and the more that you, you limp, basically. So it's very important to make sure that we're full health or as high health as possible to move as fast as possible throughout these levels. Because if we were damage limping into the next segment, we lose quite, quite a lot of time, actually. And it moves the camera more as well, which can make the uh, the prop hover a bit more difficult actually. All right, uh, coming up here is the first underwater map. Uh, the physics is a bit different. Prop flies is usually way no, easier awesome. under uh, like in the ocean. It's just very floaty. You can lose height easily. You can gain height easily. The prop is just usually uh, more. Uh, it cooperates more often, basically. So gaining height like this is way easier than. Uh, when you're just in a normal room. The geometry in this game in general, especially in the large open water areas, can slow you down more than, more than you think. Um, so you usually, like movement without prop hovering in areas like this is obviously a lot slower because we can just fly over everything with this. But um, general movement is, uh, is, a bit, is a bit more difficult. So we usually just spam jump, but of course we don't need to here. So. Yeah, so Cake's not actually taking a direct line to the end of the map here. He's taking a slight detour to go to what we call a preload trigger. That will start the next map loading, and there's some, some niceties that come along with that. So between maps, rather than being a hard loading screen, we do get sort of like a, an almost seamless transition through some of the airlocks. And by hitting a preload, it will preserve our position as well as some of the props that we bring along with us. Which, such as this one here that we're using now, this has a chance to... It used to be beneficial in the route, not anymore. This has a chance uh, to still be here after the, after the load. So he's just going to clip in using that. There we go. Very nice. Going to back up and get to the door before it closes. Yeah, shout out to SJ for finding this right. little escape here. Yep. Uh, so the game thinks we're still inside of here because there's no way... Uh, you can get to here, but we always find a way. <laughs> so uh, this door will disappear in uh, this upcoming map. Uh, 
so now we're in the transport station. Uh, the point of this map is to... You would go back uh, like over there and uh, power up the station again. Uh, so you can use the train. But there is a trigger outside here which will uh, enable or start a video that is playing inside the train uh, without powering it up. Uh, so hopefully... There we go. The video started and then I exited out. So the game thinks I'm in the train, but I'm not. And I slowly go back. In, the camera goes back into the train. And uh, so that looks a, a bit weird. A bit weird. And here you can see the map like uh, repeatedly. Uh, I've not far. seen the round door there before. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> don't Don't worry about it. <laughs> We'll probably see another instance of that later on, one that we do know about. Hopefully. So you're usually sat in this chair right now, watching the, the yeah, video yeah. that's playing. Uh, you, you'd watch this video up here. Uh, to power up all the buttons, plug in the Omni tool, but um, the trigger for the actual video is out of bounds. Uh, so we can just barely hit that. So we are actually waiting. There is a scripted segment coming up now where the train crashes, shockingly. Wow. Yeah, who, who and it launches thought? us and flips us through. <laughs> and uh, now we can just roam around a little bit before the actual crash happens. Let's see. Oh, there's the door. There's the door. <laughs> <laughs> the block it. <laughs> the door is now gone. Goodbye. Where did I get a flash? Where did you <laughs> <laughs> That's the least of my concern. <laughs> So the crash puts us in a, a neutral position, basically. So um, yep. we triggered it early, and now we are injured slightly. Got to make our way out. That trigger doesn't unlock instantly, so to, the the prompt to interact with the the airlock doesn't appear instantly. So you do have a, a couple of seconds there to yeah to wait. And so normally in speedruns we would use the sheet that we put next to the the airlock door to fly, but Cake's done a slightly slower route, which is a little more interesting for a reason. I'll let him showcase it. Yes. Showcase it uh, here. Yeah. Uh, there is actually a new trick found. Um, you can hold up on an analog stick on a gamepad as at the same time as you're holding up on a keyboard, and it makes you climb uh, twice the speed up ladders. Um, climbing down ladders, uh, inputs like A, S, D all work for climbing down. So if you hold back on an analog stick, A, S, and D at the same time, you climb down four times the speed. Uh, looks really cool, <laughs> but it's just not useful anywhere, unfortunately. Uh, would be cooler if it was four times upwards. Um, so right. here we're going to see another example. We're going to go into a big open uh, ocean area, and uh, we're going to bring along the floor with us. Yep. That's always useful. Uh, jumping to get to the ladder there puts you one, uh, one step higher on the ladder. I know there's an official word. I don't know it. But <laughs> one step higher on the ladder just to save a, a little bit of time. Yeah. And there's a rock. I, I think it's a rock. <laughs> well, what you saw there is the camera is actually not uh, locked. So normally you would not be able to look all the way down. Uh, but since we did that uh, uh, sequence of events back in a transport station, our camera, our camera is now locked freely, so we can look all the way down, all the way up. Um, which is a little bit scary if you have a setup for this prop flight right here, like looking all the way down. Uh, there's just no limit right now, so kind of have to be a little bit careful for that. Yeah, the upside is Simon can now do backflips. Yep, exactly. It's worth it. Way cooler. <laughs> yep, yep. So here we're skipping another huge story section. Catherine, who is, we're talking to on the uh, Omni tool, is actually inside the station we just crossed over. To, get, uh, to proceed forward in the story, we've got to go through this uh, big ruined ship called the Curie, which uh, we will be entering, believe it or not, we won't be skipping, as that is the, uh, the next level. But obviously, to get, and, and to get here, we, we need to go through another like smaller ruined vessel, bring the key over to Catherine. She unlocks the Omni tool. But obviously, we are just going to enter through a, uh, a hole in the side of the ship. And we'll, we're going to see the, the black screen loading screen, which is the, the one that you get if you don't hit the preload, as we did earlier. Yeah. 
And also, if you notice, I tilt my camera upwards a little bit to gain speed. Or not gain speed, gain height. Um, that's just because I want to tilt the prop so it become becomes like a ramp, which I walk on. So as Cosmic said, I'm bringing the floor with me. I can also manipulate like how it, if it gives me uh, height or not, or if I should lose a bit of height. And here we're going to see an example of using a prop to gain height very, very quickly, called a quick ascend. Um, I'll let Trigger explain this one. Yeah, so quick ascends are a type of prop that uh, prop hover that works in certain ways. Where if you stand on a prop and then scroll it slightly right. towards right. you to sort of pull it into your feet, uh, with certain props and certain setups, it allows you to gain height like much much faster. We. Who needs ladders, right? <laughs> Who needs walls? There is uh, a slight chance that I'll clip out of bounds here, but luckily there's the auto save pretty close by. Yeah, so this is also new to the route, is ceiling clips. Very nice. By crouching on top of a prop and like squishing yourself against the ceiling and then standing up again, you can push yourself through thin floors. So in the Curie, which is where we are now, there is a, a monster called the Flesher, uh, who we didn't even spawn, but this scripted sequence here, uh, you can see him down the bottom there. Got a, got a nice face. And this is a scripted uh, chase sequence, and we're going to go back down to a small escape vessel on the Curie, which we were supposed to enter before, uh, but obviously we skipped all that, all the dialogue and everything there. Um, you notice that he's, the screen shakes every now and then. That is the effect of the Flesher. If you played casually, you'll know this guy teleports around a lot, and every time he teleports, that distortion effect plays. Um, and in order to uh, initiate that scripted sequence, we've got to, <laughs> by the way, who needs doors? Um, we need to pull out three tentacles. Um, but we can actually just plug, we can unplug one, plug the same one back in, and just do that three times, and it still counts as as uh, plugging three out, so the, the sequence initiates anyway. So. so I was I was trying to get rid of the door, which I did, and uh, there's a <laughs> There's a little bit of a barrier here. If you still have uh, the fire extinguisher uh, available for you, now it clipped out of bounds, but you can just barely do a clip here, and then you can roam around freely uh, in Fury. Uh, all of the collisions are still loaded, even though it doesn't look like it. Uh, so I could. What, what I like to do is if I clip out early, I like to like uh, walk up all the way to the top where the tentacles were uh, blindfolded. <laughs> uh, well, it's kind of blindfolded, but I guess you can you can see the corridors with the... You, you have some visual cues left. Soma also doesn't have any death planes beneath the map, so another thing you can do with the fire extinguisher is very awkwardly, it's also very difficult, clip out of this little vessel and you will just fall until now, where the game will teleport you back straight up into the vessel. Um, but it's fun to just infinitely fall and hear Simon talk casually as if nothing's happening. Yeah. And then all of a sudden get teleported straight back up to the, to the vessel. It works different for every game in the Frictional Games uh, series. Like for Rebirth, for an example, uh, if you're out of bounds or if you're falling out of bounds for like more than five seconds, I think, it will teleport you back to your last position that you stood still. Uh, in the Dark Descent, I'm not sure how many seconds it takes, but it's like half a minute of falling, you'll just die. <laughs> so uh, in this game, you can just fall forever unless there's an actual death plane placed. Which a good time to mention, one of this map has them, uh, because we're about to see a good friend. Her name is Kate. That is actually her name. I'm not just making that up. Uh, it's a robot called K8. And uh, if you so happen to decide to jump off the edge of this map, Kate will save you. I don't know how, <laughs> but uh, she does rescue you. She does her best. <laughs> yeah, true. And we love her for it. Okay, yeah. exactly. He's the best bot. So here, uh, you'll notice we we're not just running holding the prop. That's because some props in Soma uh, weigh a lot more, and they will slow down your movement. So by jumping and re-grabbing the prop in the air, we maintain our normal running speed, because we're not holding it when we touch the ground. So, and it may look minor, but it, it does save uh, quite a bit of time in, uh, in this section here where we are going to activate the Zeppelin. I'm going to leave the prop there because we're going to grab it later. 
And uh, we're going to do some things with lines and arrows. There we go. Match the purple to the yellow. And that will activate the, uh, the signal relay, basically, to, uh, to call the, the Zeppelin over. And that's how we proceed to the, to the next level. Another prop, prop fly uh, to enter the Zeppelin a bit earlier. Because uh, we, in the actual game, we need to wait for it to land. Uh, and then the gates uh, fall down and you can plug in Kath. Yeah, so this, this is another thing that got patched in more recent releases where... Uh, oh, no. Almost. almost. Uh, so in, in more recent versions of the game, you can't plug Kath in until the Zeppelins are landed. Uh, it's just to stop this, this skip a little bit. Yeah. So what Cake was trying there was jumping on top of the box. As we plugged Kath in, when oh, as Cake plugged Kath in, as we were quite high up, the game is now going to try and use physics to push us back to that location. As we're on the ground, we get stuck on this ledge. But if if Cake had been on the box, we would have gone over this ledge, hit a rock, and then flown way up in the air. Yep. As get, the game is just like constantly trying to push you back and forth, trying to get you back to that position, and eventually it just gives up. Which uh, unfortunately is actually disadvantageous in in terms of time. Um, but it looks funny, and we all know that's more important, so there you go. So essentially, the Zeppelin here isn't, isn't powered and uh, needs a battery. Um, there are two things we can get batteries from in this area. One of them is Kate, so we can zap Kate. We, we don't want to do that. Uh, but there's another robot here. I forget his name. And we're going to zap him instead. There's Kate. Ooh. Oh, no, no, no. I think if Not I would have done that, you guys would have left. Um, <laughs> so, and I need you. <laughs> so we're going to jump in front of him here, because every time you zap him, he's going to try and float away, uh, as you can see here. So after the third zap, he always lands in the same place. So Keiko is going to go over there, preemptively pick up the card. Very and, quick pick up there. Yeah, that was insane. And the uh, Kate is now. Um, She's happy, yeah. She's not sad at all that we've just murdered her friend. Uh, and there we go, we've... Sorry, it's the Omni tool in the... It's the chip in the Omni tool that's, that's gone, not the battery in the Zeppelin. So. And another reason we don't want to zap Kate, not only because she's the best, uh, there's two reasons. She's very fast when she floats away. She floats... Well, I guess three reasons. She floats away in a random direction, so you can't... You know, it's really hard to block her like we did with the other robot. And uh, she also takes five zaps instead of three. So, um, you know, combine all those together. Uh, we, we don't want to zap her. Yeah, as the friendly robot, she takes four zaps to down her. And then just to rub it in, you've got that one extra zap to... As she's open. on the ground, yeah, zapping injured. And that's a, a big theme of the, the story in this game, really, is like... There's plenty of games with this concept, yeah. but it plays with like how much humanity it? is there in yeah. these robots. Um, and that's a, a big theme that the game plays with, definitely. Ooh, Ooh. that was that was <laughs> yeah, we, It got grabby. Yeah. Uh, so we escaped the Zeppelin now. Uh, it will take us to the, split, uh, the place that we want to go to, but we want to get there a bit before. Uh, we got some uh, preparations to make, and in the meantime, uh, I'm just gonna prop fly out into the void. Um, this, I, I don't know why for some reason, but this prop fly in particular is just the most stable prop fly in the whole game. Just there, there's just a PNG on the on the screen. <laughs> so uh, while we are flying, would we have time for a couple of donations? Yeah, sure. Cool. We have a $10 donation from King Kaju Legend saying, good luck to Cake Man on this amazing run. Also, a great casually in, in case anyone is looking for a good game. Thank you so much, King Kaju. Uh, we have another $10 from Sui Machine yeah. saying, did you know that Frictional Game has one of their offices here in Malmö? Well, now you know. Thank you so much for that one. Thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, now since we've escaped the Zeppelin uh, and there's a dialogue going on inside of the Zeppelin, uh, so you'll That's only good. hear Simon's uh, <laughs> side of the talk. Um, he's he's going to talk to himself this whole duration until we meet up with Kath again. Also, this whole place has a barrier around it, but for some reason, 
this spot in particular it just has a gap in it so uh, we're gonna abuse that <laughs> get into the area a little bit earlier uh, thank you frictional <laughs> a simon's width gap yep so the entrance to theta here is a very big door and usually we have to wait i don't know how long it takes exactly we have to wait a long time for this door to open but uh and the game still thinks we're we're in the zeppelin right now as kk said so what we're going to do is we're, we're basically going to open this door before any of this happens, um, before the, so the sequence in the Zeppelin is over, different. so we don't have to come back here and wait later on. Um, and we're also going to set up, we're going to jam the door with, uh, with this panel here, which is oh so convenient. And that's going to save uh, a bit of time in the map transition. I don't know the exact reasons. Um, I don't think anyone knows the exact reasons for this one. <laughs> it's just uh, Soma. Soma. Yep. Yeah, my best guess from reading the code here is that the game is sort of panicking and trying to contain you by expediting the loading sequence, but I, I'm not entirely sure on that. It seems to, like visually, it speeds up the whole draining the room sequence. So we basically skip the sequence where it drains the water from the room. You'll see after he jumps back out that you'll see the water uh, take, up, take uh, like splash on the screen, yep. and then um, he is suddenly, the physics will will reset to as if he was not underwater. Because, um, yeah, jumping underwater, as Keiko mentioned earlier, it is different than just jumping when you're inside. Um, so we're going to grab Catherine. Perfect timing. The Zeppelin just lands ready for us there. And now you can, now you can see um, the door's already open for us, so we skip that whole opening sequence. Uh, and we can just go straight in. No way has been found to skip this whole area. Um, the Omni tool is placed in the Zeppelin when the map transitions. Yep. So, and we can't, we're not allowed to take it out until the Zeppelin has landed. So. Yeah, so anyone who's played this game casually will probably remember this station Theta as one of the slowest and scariest stations in the, in the entire game. Yep. And uh, the any percent route kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, still meet, we'll still meet one of the, uh, the kind inhabitants oh, here. Also, uh, the door, for reasons. <laughs> door spawn. Anyone there? Just Can we explain that? Nope, absolutely not. Well, Catherine, we found Theta. There we go. Clip through this wall here. That's going to put us to a vent, uh, which is how we proceed to the next area. Now, this part of the game, we have to power up an elevator, which takes a long time, and it's pretty scary. Uh, the elevator takes us really far down, so what we're going to do is, instead of taking the elevator, we're just going to jump all the way down. There we go. Don't try these strats at the hotel here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 16 floors, that's rough. Yeah, so a quick clip back in bounds. And uh, say hello to Acres, everyone. He's, uh, Sounds happy. Yeah, hello. there he is. And he's going to give us a quick Whoa. smooch. <laughs> there we go. And one of the very few, uh, I guess, unskippable cutscenes in the game, uh, well, what we can do is sit down. And uh, it's a vision of Simon's girlfriend, the one we saw at the very beginning in the cutscene. Um, her face, we're not going to get to see it in this cutscene here uh, while the game is loading, but we're not going to get to see it. But if you look at her character model in this cutscene, uh, it's actually just a face full of maggots. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, because we never get to see it, unused content maybe, but um, yeah, it's not very pleasant. You'll get to see in a minute, it's just her facing the window. The game is taking an exceptionally long time to, <laughs> to load this. Don't there we go. go. Hello. It's okay. We're back in the apartment. Look. Yeah, that's, uh, so we've got to do everything we just did again. Relax. I think so. Can Where's the tracer fluid? Can you move? <laughs> yeah. Make sure to check the, the bathroom. No? No. He hasn't even got a disc inserted. What does he plan on doing? But, oh dear, oh, oh. shockingly, it's all just a dream. And we're back. And now we're in some goo. We're going to get ourselves out of that goo. Ready for some more clips. Yeah. Go, yeah. So skipping, sorry, skipping the uh, the scariest area in the whole game, in my opinion. This whole exit segment here, there are plenty of monsters, and they are terrifying. 
Yeah, so uh, the clips here are some of the trickiest to learn if you're looking at picking up this game. This one's particularly scary. You have n almost no room to stand on outside. And that was there. amazing. That was really fast. Right pretty there. good. Now, a lot of this geometry is actually a lot less scary than it looks. There are a few gaps here and there, um, and you don't want to be boosted off the map because, as I said, there are no death planes. So if, he, if Kakri drops out of the map here, he is going to fall infinitely, and there is no end to it, because uh, there's no sort of, there's no Kate to help us out here, because uh, we murdered her friend, unfortunately. Oh, there, there is a way in bounds. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is not an area you want to get stuck no, in. No, absolutely there not. We go. There we go, pops back in. <laughs> Gonna bring the floor with us again. Skip past uh, a lot of this area. And uh, there's also a small little time save here. Uh, normally, when you open this door right here to flush the whole area, you would enter here. But running towards Acres and then do a 180, when the flushing uh, sound starts, you save six seconds. The cutscene plays a little bit faster. Uh, so that's a free time save. I think that's another one of those things that we just can't explain. It just kind of... Just works. <laughs> yeah. it just works. It does, yeah. So we're going to skip quite a, a large story section of the game here. Um, there's a whole... The, the station we're heading to now is called Omicron. Um, it's a very big, very big station we'll see in a minute. Um, also, rip that guy. Badge. Um, <laughs> and um, we are instead going to... You might see on the right side, there's like a, a big dome annex building. Um, not those, not those, uh, those domes right. that you're seeing there. I don't know if you actually see it in the any percent, but there's a, a building that you have to go into and solve a puzzle, um, lift the quarantine that's currently on Omicron. Uh, we can't just walk through the door, uh, well, unless you've got a sheet, as we'll see in a second. It's, um, it's up there, you see? Yeah, it? those lights, those series of lights there, you can see. Um, yeah. The player, normally you'd go straight to the door on the left side there, and it will tell you about the quarantine, and then you've got to go over to that building, lift it. Instead, we're going to ignore the door, um, and Keiko's going to have a very precise lineup for one of the hardest clips in the game here. It's uh, a very precise clip. Uh, very recently found the setup for it, so hopefully it goes good. Let's see. So you want to grab a bit above the shadow part right here, pull it towards you, look down, and a bit to the left. And, that and there he goes, very nice. There is a more consistent way to do that, but it um, involves picking up a basically one of the models of Kate. Uh, it's a bit different, it's not quite the same. Um, but the prop, as I said earlier, is one of the heavy ones, so you move slower while carrying it. And if you want, it's a big prop, so it's really, really easy to clip it's in. Giant, it's yeah. giant. So. so if you want a guaranteed clip, basically, um, you pick that up. Right. Um, I'm going to let Cake and Trigger explain Omicron because it's a very fast-paced um, station here that I don't know too much about. So. Yeah, so Omicron is a level that is particularly complex. We're supposed to come in here, find a new suit, and go down into the abyss to continue our journey. But if you're playing this casually, you'll find the suit, and then you'll find that it's not got some parts, and you've got to go and find those parts. We're going to do that in completely the opposite way and get the parts first because we already know what they are and where they're going to be. There's going to be a lot of clipping and lots of prop flying for the next two minutes. This is probably the most intense part of the run. Lots of puzzle solving as well. So that's like the, the eyes of the suit, basically, because if we didn't explain this before, Simon is no longer a person. He is a person inside of a robot. We'll uh, explain that a bit more later on. Yeah, so Cake's going to make a very quick safety save here because this is a particularly tricky uh, clip out. The, cl uh, the clip itself is not particularly problematic, but jumping across the gap that you're going to see here, you basically have like a millimeter thin ledge, and the physics engine sometimes likes to just nudge you off the edge. Also doesn't help that the map is giant. <laughs> Those yeah. are pretty yeah. slow. Yeah, the, the previous autosave was right when we entered this map, so... Going all that all that way back is not ideal. Get a better angle of this. The handy little platform there and this ridiculously thin ledge. Yeah. 
Very nice, there we go. Now, normally we open this and we're supposed to use the chair. Oh, he's using the chair, sorry, never mind. You can actually yeah. jump and uh, very precisely uh, interact with the gel through a tiny little gap that opens on the glass. So two very rapid uh, clips there, yeah. Very getting, nice. getting that sheet to come out with you through the door doesn't happen that often. It, it's particularly picky, that one. Yeah, and the bigger the prop, the that was very strange, by the <laughs> way. The bigger the prop, the usually the easier the, the clip is. So using a very thin, flimsy tray uh, doesn't help very much. However, we're about to clip through. There's a, a monster there, by the way. We're just going to walk past. Um, yeah, don't bother. Uh, we don't need it. We don't even need a prop to clip through this one. Boom. Just oh, there, there we go. Boom. Hold W. Walk through the wall. And uh, some kind of precise geometry here. If you're not careful, you can kind of fall through. You've got to um, do a straight jump over this. Uh, it's kind of precise. And then a clip back and bounce. There we go. And that's the Very nice. Of that, so, that section at the end there used to be a lot worse. There were two jumps like over the void and out and around. So thanks to Yuma for yeah. finding the strat that we now just use to jump over the top of that section. And, Usually in some games, you know, if you miss a jump, oh, we'll just respawn. Uh, no, that's not happening on this map in Soma. As I said, no death planes, so you fall from infinity, and the only way to do it, the only way to get back, is to reload to save. Yeah. Um, so this dialogue that we're hearing now, uh, we're also hearing the music from the robot, which I haven't experienced before. Is that normal? Does that play here? Sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. So when you're close to that robot that we saw earlier, um, this eerie music plays and it's continuing. But yeah, the dialogue that we're hearing now um, is supposed to be kind of the first thing that we do when we enter Omicron. We find this uh, the station to put Catherine in, and now she's telling us about the suit, that we need to get all the parts. Little does she know, um, we've already got them. So I know the, the sequence of events here is very precise as well. If you do it in the wrong order, the game will soft lock. Um, needless to say, we don't want that. Yeah, so we need to wait for a few audio cues and we need to press certain things in a certain order. That orange button needs to be the first thing that we press. And uh, quick question, what is the best way to stop a door from closing? Answer, jam a Simon in it. There we go. There we go. So, usually that door gets locked, um, uh, and we're stuck in this room. But by jamming the door open with a chair, we can leave whenever we want. And there is a bigger reason why we want to have that open. Although we have all the items we need to proceed to the next level, um, there is something very, very useful coming up uh, to allow us to skip dialogue. And that's the whole reason we, we jam that door open. And we're going to activate pod D, which is the, the suit that we're in. Yeah, specifically waiting for that line, try activating the suit again. If we press the button before that, we'll have to go through the entire activation sequence and it will fail, and then Kath and Simon will have a conversation about finding all the parts. Yep. So coming out here specifically to press this voice recorder, which stops the ongoing conversation, and then we can head back. Also, so she's back again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yet another one that... Uh, oh, she doesn't actually teleport, though, does she? She only teleports with that script. Um, she's very... This monster in particular... A lot of the monsters in this game, they have, like, uh, heightened sensors, standard for video games. Um, she is very alert to movement, so any movement nearby, and she'll start... Uh, kind of like the witches in Left 4 Dead 2, if you're familiar with them. Um, she acts very similarly to those. Uh, the proxies, the red, like the acres, Acre, uh, Terry acres we saw earlier in Theta, they're very alert to sound. Um, so yeah, heightened sensors. And she's scripted to teleport back there um, to add a bit of intensity to, to the section. I, I was mashing jump out of that, uh, like that... Uh, animation because sometimes you can like float up in the air before you stand on the floor again i don't know why it happens but uh yeah you'll the, the yeah the first time i got it i perfectly timed on accident <laughs> uh, the jump input and uh, once again tape recorder does the exact same thing as before um that catherine is talking in that room right now simon is not responding because he's rude um and we skip the whole the whole dialogue there, and although we've got to come all the way out here to interact with the tape, it's still faster. Um, so we can interact with the Omni tool immediately, 
and uh, make our way to the infamous climber section. But first, we're going to do a quick clip out. Um, this saves, you can see the whole map unloading there, which is pretty funny. We're going to head to a very precise spot here on that wall. And this essentially skips waiting for the airlock door to, to open again. So um, this is the climber section, um, which is approximately, what, six and a half minutes of Somewhere downtime. So we will have uh, plenty of time for messages and donations uh, right now if you've got any. Fantastic. We do have a couple of donations. First off, uh, Drakryttaren donates $20, saying, Good luck with your run, brother. Tell Melmer hi from me. Thank you so much for that. We also have $10 from uh, Torque9, saying, Let's go, Cake. I should be asleep, but I wasn't going to miss this. Less than three. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have a donation from Polister of $25. Saying, let's get an incentive match, shall we? And that, together with all the previous ones I just read, they went for the um, Agrippa ending for the Amnesia run coming up. So with that, we actually did meet that incentive. So we'll hey, very nice. See, um, that's really cool. Thank you so much for this. So you may be wondering, um, with all the prop flying that we've done, why don't we just fly and drop all the way down underneath the, the climber and skip all this? Well, there's multiple reasons. Uh, the way this level works is kind of similar to what we saw with the train earlier. We are not moving here. What is instead happening is the entire level around us is moving up. And the way to proceed in this level is all tied to these scripted sequences that are all tied to plugging in the Omni tool, sitting down in the chair. So essentially, if we did if we, we just dropped down uh, using a, using a prop, we would drop infinitely, um, as as with the other levels. Also, um, the next level starts on the climber, so um, we yeah during there's one thing we have to do, and then there's a, a loading screen, and we're in the next level still, sat here on the climber. Um, there's a lot of cushy dialogue going on right now, but. Yeah, we're just going to ignore that. Th there was a, um, a strat that we were experimenting with, uh, taking a prop into the climber and having it load into the next map and then trying to clip out of bounds uh, or trying to clip through the elevator. So we would get on the ground uh, earlier, but it didn't work. Uh, I'm not sure which part didn't work, but we brought a chair from Omicron into the elevator. When the elevator started, uh, the the chair just ascended and then just popped <laughs> yeah. to the void. Like. One fun thing you can do um, out of pure boredom is uh, drop a prop off the edge, activate the climber sequence, and if you're kind of lucky, you'll see the prop as the, as the level goes up, floating upwards. And here comes, uh, unfortunately, uh, as great as this part is in the run for, for bathroom breaks and getting a drink and all that, there is actually one thing we have to do. Uh, we, so we can't just leave for six and a half minutes and come back, because uh, the elevator is, shockingly, going to run out of power. We didn't see that coming. Um, and it's the easiest fix in the world, <laughs> as you'll see in a moment. Like, there is a lot of downtime, but it's just so unfortunate that you have to do this one small thing yep. in the middle. Yep. You can't go completely at AFK, but you have plenty of time to go to the bathroom, do whatever uh, during this first four minutes. And uh, think it's gonna happen now? Oh no, who saw that coming? <laughs> Shocking. All right. I got Somehow the Omni tool is still, uh, still lit up. I guess it's got its own power. Uh, gonna interact with the ladder from the other side, which just warps us through it. That's how ladders work. And there is a small little gap here. You can take the fuse and pull it down. There we go. Swag strats, there we go. Swag strats. And we got to sit back down at the chair for another few minutes of elevator. <laughs> oh. Oh. What is this? Oh, dear. <laughs> Guess we get a good view of ourselves. Yeah, so a little bug with that animation is you can hold S to reverse the camera animation, and if you do it just at the right time, Simon's body will spawn in, and we can just keep holding S and see it from a different perspective. Yeah. 
Look, I know we've just had one, but can we get another round of applause for Kate for this run so far? Brilliant. So since we did that, uh, the elevator, uh, well, the elevator animation didn't start, so it looks like we're stuck in the same place, but uh, it's actually going down. Uh, and as the dialogue progresses, we will eventually uh, transfer yeah. to the next map. There is a, a guy that we're going to see here. His name is Ross, again, not a name I've made up. That is his name. Uh, we saw him briefly in Omicron. Um, he was preaching. And um, we're going to see him again in a moment. He basically wants us to destroy the core of uh, what's called the WoW in this game. It's the, like, the tentacles all over the place um, that we've been seeing. It's an artificial intelligence. Uh, AI has grown so much over, <laughs> over the past year. Yeah. Uh, and there's Ross there. He's going to prepare dinner for us. And uh, we're going to go meet him for dinner later on. I think. And now I released this. You, can, you, you heard that he <laughs> buckled up again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Now we're in the next level. Um, still sat down in the elevator, but we're, we're nearing the end now. Um, the monitors on the elevator are quite interesting though. Some of them, they do say like what level that you're at. There's like the abyss and then there's like the deep something. They've got names for all the, the layers underwater that we are. And the whole reason we got that suit, I'm not sure if it was mentioned earlier, the whole reason we got the suit in Omicron is so that we don't crumple up into a tin can going this far underwater. There was a vehicle in Theta, one of the previous stations, but the WoW had corrupted it, um, making it, rendering it unusable. So that's why there was a huge detour to Omicron. Um, and now we're going to be in what I think is the largest area, largest level in the game, and just in terms of sheer space that you can travel. Um, but once again, to avoid some geometry, we're going to bring the floor with us in some conveniently placed uh, buildings here. There's going to be uh, another sheet that we can bring. So there we go. Now we're finally out of the climber. Ooh. That was absolutely thrilling. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, so as I said, conveniently placed buildings down here. This area is quite well done, casually. Um, you've got to light up some, some lights to uh, like kind of guide you. Uh, there are various um, fish and ski creatures that you can encounter that are friendly. Very friendly, won't kill you. Um, Not at all. But we're just going to fly, we're just going to, well, can you call it flying if you're underwater? What do you yeah. call it? Call it flying, right? Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna fly over over all of that, and you can kind of bre you can kind of see the um, like the, the casual route, the, those red lights kind of guide you in the in the right direction. Um, this area can get very um, there's a lot of uh, like what do you call them underwater like storms. I yeah. <laughs> there's a word for it. Yeah, so throughout this level, there's four storm triggers. Each one you hit will increase the intensity of the storm underwater until you hit the fourth one which will reset it back to calm waters. So Cake's just got enough height to pass completely over the top of these yep. so that we don't end up with, but basically you can't see. Uh, you also walk a lot slower um, if you hit those triggers. Um, uh, well, I think it's if you hit like the second and third, then you start walking slower, um, the more that you get. Yeah, e each one that you hit will decrease your, t your speed by 20% of your maximum up yep. until the last one, which will set you back up to whatever your max speed was at the time. Uh, also, um, like I did in Upsilon outside, uh, I'm not doing a straight line to the next map. Uh, I'm also going to go out of my way to hit a preload trigger, which we will, which we'll uh, use for the next map. Uh, we're also going to use this prop for the next map. Uh, so the preload will uh, restore our player position into the next map, and also all props that is within the. What do you call it? Like the transferring zone? Hmm. Yeah, so a lot of the areas, a lot of the loading zones in this game are disguised by entering a station and the water's got to drain. Um, or if you're going outside and the, and the room's got to fill up with water. Um, and that's how they disguise a lot of the loading screens. I also just want to ask, what is this prop that we're using? I think it's an angle grinder. It's, it's an angle grinder. There we go. Thank you, audience. <laughs> 
It's not I have... working though. I... No. Right, look, I thought this was like a hedge cutter. <laughs> and I was thinking, why do we have a hedge cutter 16,000 feet under the sea? Oh, I, I don't know how far we are under. That's just a number. Sea hedges? Got. Sea hedges. I mean, if you want to go on a fly. That is. Th yeah, that's it. It's got to be it. That's got to be it. It's the most optimal. We're flying over a cave right now um, with a lot of uh, eight legged creatures in, uh, which I know was quite a scary part of the game for a lot of people. Um, and exiting that cave will meet you with an anglerfish. A very friendly anglerfish with multiple faces who is friendly. Yeah, very happy to see you. Yeah. I'm just uh, rushing over. You know, you get a good look at the, the face on it. It's very, uh, it's very happy. So I don't believe the Leviathan appears yet. I think that's later on. But we will be... Uh, I don't think we will be seeing him at all, actually. Will we? No. No, didn't think so. Uh, very big fish, that's all I'll say. So we won't be seeing him. Unfortunately, this one. Unless something really goes wrong. <laughs> Unless something really goes wrong, yeah. Even the uh, like stinger uh, preview of the very big fish, uh, we skip. So, Using the prop to slightly boost how quick that door opens, um, it is, I can't describe how small it is, but it is time saving nonetheless. So. Yeah, so we, we, we used the launch box previously for that whole uh, prop fly. But uh, this prop can force open the door a little bit faster, so that's why we switched to it. Yeah, so we're now entering Tower Station, which is another one of the more complicated ones. And if you're looking at learning this game, it's one that will it's take a, a little bit of one. practice. Yeah. Yeah. Even in no major glitches, the uh, monster in this area is arguably... It's, there's a lot of RNG involved with this, uh, with this monster. Um, but a monster that we won't be seeing in any percent, unfortunately. But yeah, there's a, there's a, a monster in here called Jin Yoshida, I believe. Um, but we won't be seeing him at inside. all. Simon says he's never been happier to be inside. I'm not quite sure he is inside. By the way, Kakeri just nailed a really hard jump in towel there. Let's get, let's get a clap for that. That's really good. And now we've just got to make our way up on top. There we go. Lots of geometry up here to get stuck on. Yeah. A lot of uh, like tentacles and, and goop and stuff like that. I'm going to clip inbounds here by interacting with a bed. Because uh, that's, how, that's how beds work. And this item we're going to pick up uh, is unlocked by turning off the life support of the non-existent person in that seat. There we go. We picked up. This is the arc. This is uh, basically the item of the story of the game. This is what we came down here for. Um, it's got a load of people's brains loaded onto it. So I'm going to just stay quiet a bit here while Cake figures there, out the yeah. geometry here. There is a really specific, yeah. there's a really precise clip uh, coming up. We want to try to clip into this dome right here by lining up, looking at a very specific part of the wall and walk forward. And it there it goes, nice. And because he's impatient, he's going to scan the Omni tool multiple times here. Um, I'm joking, it's not because he's impatient, it's because it's actually faster, bizarrely. It speeds up the next section. For some reason. Yeah, again, another thing we... <laughs> Soma things. Can, it cannot stress enough just how finicky that clip in at the end is. Yep. Yeah. If you are even slightly off with your aim or you're you're limping even slightly, it just won't work. Nope. You'll hit the wall, bounce slightly, and then just fall out of the map. And you're in the death plane. Uh, if, if, sorry, you're not. In, you're in the non-existent death plane, so you just yeah. fall for infinity. If if you don't hold the arc even, uh, it won't work because you need a specific amount of speed even to yep. make it work. And while carrying the arc, it counts as a heavy prop, so it it does slow down your movement. Once again, carrying the floor with us. This prop can be a little finicky. There he goes. I'm gonna set it up again. Just yeah. because it was a little bit... Good idea, yeah. Rotate. There he goes. Um, so, another big story area that we're flying over now. Um, there's a whole station that we're skipping called Alpha. Uh, this is where that, that monster that said he was preparing dinner. Um, that's where he's prepared it, but we, we're gonna skip it all. Unfortunately, um, there's a big sequence with the heart of the WoW um, where you can lose your hand. You can lose your, your whole arm if you choose to interact with it or not. 
play the game yourself and find out what happens. Um, and yeah, again, as I said, we're skipping the whole thing. Alpha is in a really bad state, though, at the minute. It is arguably the station that is the, in the worst state at the minute. Uh, completely destroyed, except for that one dome room. In that dome right there that you're seeing is the, the heart of the WoW. Um, and then there's an escape tunnel sequence. You can see the tunnel right there, and that's what spawns the very big fish. Um, <laughs> as usual, skipping all that, so no very big fish over here. And again, that whole outside area that you're seeing there, that is, you've basically got to hide from the big fish, uh, and there's multiple places you can heal. If you get caught by it, it drags you to another area. So um, quite convenient that you can skip all this. And that train on the right that you're seeing, that's the, uh, where the, the arc, the box that we had, that is heading to the station that we are going to now. Um, and we're going to launch it into space, as you do. Simon thinks he's going to space, but as he's about to find out, he'll be very upset. I can angle the profile a little bit so he can look forward. Unfortunately, I have to look down for most prop flies, but eh, there we go. You can see the door over there <laughs> slowly uh, going down as well. So, right. So that was the last uh, like long prop fly of the game. Yeah. We're closing. Um, and never have I had to ask this of anyone, but can we please pray for the book? Excellent. Thank you, guys. Book so prayers. We are about to use a book to, uh, to clip out of bounds, and then we're going to try and drag the book with us out of bounds. And it's probably going to look pretty smooth, because Cake's a god, but um, it's, this, is one of the, <laughs> this is one of the most tricky... I mean, personally, I would say it's one of the most tricky uh, out of bounds. Uh, one of the most finicky. Uh, and if you mess it up, you, are no, you no longer have access to the book. So that's the key thing. You can clip out of bounds with it, and that's fine, but you need the book to come with you. So uh, you don't want to be trapped outside. Yeah, and it's just up to RNG whether the prop want to actually go through the collision of the roof. Uh, there's been some like setups, but sometimes they don't work. It's just, it, it's a coin toss. Quite often it ends up just being hold it in a certain spot and just scroll up and down like yep. mad. So eventually it, yeah. it comes out. Yep. So this is the book, guys. Let's go. Yeah, and I'm gonna jump on top of it. Uh, As you enable uh, re-grab glitch, so we gain collision with it. Again, a bit of height, clip through the f roof like it's through this. the ceiling. Yeah, that's and it. Just scroll it, and maybe if it wants to. Come maybe. on, book. There we, yeah, go. there we go. That's it. Thank you for the prayers. And there's one last trick right here. Uh, during this conversation right here, we can take uh, some damage in this corner, Never get used to that. building up speed and turning our camera. We took damage, very and that just corner. stops the conversation completely. Yeah. And that was basically the last uh, trick of the game. Uh, the rest is just uh, smooth sailing then. So, uh, if there's any donations, now would be a good time. Excellent. We have a $25 donation from Big Marisa saying greetings from Stream 2. Hello, Stream 2. And yeah, we do have a second stream, so, uh, you know, feel free to check that one out. Not right now, because we have some really exciting stuff here going on, but, uh, you know, <laughs> later and check out the schedule there. Uh, we also have a $20 donation from uh, Skyrion saying uh, Soma is an amazing game, both casually and for speedruns. I'm super excited about this showcase. Best of luck to Kakri for running and Cosmic and Trigger for commentary. You guys are amazing. Shoutouts to you and shoutouts to the HPL speedrunning community. Thank you so much, Gary. Much love, man. Much love. Thank you. Just push the button. No. <laughs> I believe he lost a second there to uh, delaying the button press. I think that's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, the timer on the right there, well, you can't see it now. Of course, I have to mention it as soon as it gets covered. Come on. There we go. So the timer on the right is clearly working down in seconds, because that's how long seconds are. 20 um, seconds. And obviously, it's going to upload Catherine first instead of us, player character. And we're launching the arc up to space. Is yep. that what have, we've uh, been waiting for? 
Catherine's done. That's great. I'm happy for her. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Oh! We made it. Yes! <laughs> but hang on a minute, we're still here. Look, it's going. It goes off. What? So, Kate, did you do something wrong? Like, um, I think we might have to do another run, I guess. <laughs> The Ark's oh, really? back at the uh, original station. We were getting on the Ark, I saw it. It finished loading just before it So, launched. yeah, uh, Simon yeah, lost a coin flip. Uh, there's a copy of him on the Ark that got launched into space. And uh, now we're viewing the copy that is left down in the abyss. It's kind of a meme how stupid Simon is. Uh, Catherine explains this concept to him probably about 18 million times throughout the game. Um, and he's still surprised at the end of it all when he doesn't make the cut. She's saying right now, the copies, the copies are up there. Catherine's happy because this is the mission that she wanted to finish, and it's done. Uh, she did a lot of hard work, as you can see. Um, and Simon doesn't think that the copies are them. And I get another thing as well, that's a, a big thing about the story. Is it them? It's whether or not you consider a copy of them to actually be them. And, uh... Wow! Language! Oh! Whoa! She's fighting back. Oh. That's worse than a blue screen. <laughs> Mega blue screen. And now all of a sudden he's sad. Because now he's alone. Right. Let's but silence. moment of silence for Simon. Might be more. No, that's not. That's it. It's the end. It's all over. Here Wait. we go. Yeah, so Frictional were very nice to players of this game, and they gave you the chance to see both sides of this Did outcome. Yeah, placing the bad ending first, and then the happy ending. Yeah, it really really gets uh, a really cool feeling about this whole game. Like, uh, and it doesn't overstay its welcome either. Uh, you know, the good ending, it's short and sweet, and um, you can get a bit more insight into the place by these like monitors that we're going to pass. Um, and you'll, you'll see in a moment, it's uh, quite the spectacle. And we're also coming up on time here. Yep. About 20 seconds. There's a way you can go out of bounds here. Uh, not going to showcase that. It's <laughs> really very difficult. difficult. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it is actually faster, so it would be a, a, a segmented <laughs> strat, if anything. It's really, really inconsistent. All right. And around the corner Catherine. is Kath. Hello. Catherine. And that is time. time. There we go. Right. That was a. Uh, that was so many percent. I'm uh, really happy that I got the opportunity to showcase this. Uh, I want to give a huge thanks to my commentators, Trigger and Cosmic. Uh, really great job. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to SJ, who uh, joined the Discord less than a year ago and just torn the game apart with all of the new finds, both for any percent and uh, NMG. Uh, really like motivated a lot of people to come back and keep grinding so huge shout outs um and also stay tuned uh, the run after is going to be amnesia the dark descent which is from the same developers uh it's equally glitchy uh if not more yep. um so uh i'm gonna be commentating that so uh, uh keep donating and uh yeah see you soon thank you ESA. Thank you so much, Tekri and crew, for that run. That was really cool. Yeah, as you said, don't go anywhere. We have Amnesia coming right up after this short intermission. See you soon.